Hey guys, welcome to Pressure Luck. First off, this is one of the most important videos that I'm going to make ever, ever. And you wanna know why? Because this girl next to me is my best friend literally since middle school. She used to make fun of me all the time when we were in kindergarten, <laughs> second grade. But usually, I hey, my, mom, I, my mom would say she just has a crush on you. That's of what course. it is. She has a crush on you. That's what it is. Make sure to tell Richard. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I grew up to like you know fellas, and this one she also likes fellas. <laughs> this is my darling friend April. She's one of my favorite people on. They're going to see that today. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> she's ba she's my sister from another Mister, and that's exactly what she is, and I absolutely Stop. love her. Cheers. Lacha. Oh, look at her. Uh -huh. Look at her. One of the most amazing things about April that I can remember from the beginning of time when I knew her is how amazing of a cook she is. Mm. She basically mm. always ran her family, even when she was like a teenager. Um, she literally like was always like the one who was like running the household, and it was and always fascinating to see. You and I have always shared the love. <laughs> Of, of the, the eat. eat. <laughs> Do you know what we said the eat? We didn't even say food. We said the eat. The eat. It's a very much a New York, <laughs> Long Island thing. No, it's like, an April and Jeffrey. An April Jeffrey thing. You know, family is defined by who is the closest to you, and she's my family. And um, she's one of the best cooks that I've known. And she's been able to cook since she was literally a child. And uh, she's surreal. I remember one day I went over to her home and she's like, do you want to make mac and cheese? And I'm like, okay. I did? Yes. And so we, you, I don't remember. You're like, we, we went through the cabinet, you're like, ugh, we have this <laughs> or something. It was like <laughs> mac, it was like, you know, like the kind of the box. And, um, <laughs> and she's like, we're going to make this real good. And she, she made it and she, she like peppered it up with all these things in the cabinets. And I was like, you just remind me of my grandma Lil, who she knew, by the way. And the one of my, she's the one of my biggest influences. Feisty, feisty. Yeah, she, she, she knew my grandma Lil. But April has been, always been one of the best cooks I've ever known. And I'll tell you something else. What we're going to make today here is going to be one of her signatures. And no, it's actually not mine. Oh, go ahead. It's actually my family, who are highly Italian, think wigs, all of that <laughs> stuff. It's a fine wig. I don't know, like, you've seen Goodfellas, they all get that big hair. Oh, and all that stuff. oh, the big so hair. So, my see. grandpa was from Sicily, and all of he, my grandpa was very down to earth, like, one of the best <laughs> men that ever lived, like, led a very humble life. But his brothers were very much like, Mambo Italianos. Hey, Mambo. Mam anyway. I love it. I mean, th so they had these crazy, crazy wigs that they would wear <laughs> that were the fakest things ever. They were really wigs? They weren't actually their hair? Very vain bunch of Italian old school men um, used to make around the holidays sausage bread. My dad, who is actually Polish Russian, would eat their sausage bread, and my father is very much like me and has a very strong personality. He's like, I could do this better. <laughs> and he, he did do it better. So it's really my dad's um, adaptation on the wigs. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeffrey loves sausage bread. Love it's it. It's the bomb. I love it. But anyway, the point is, this sausage bread is uh, deeply rooted um, it's called Wigsy bread. It's Wigsy bread. <laughs> it's a deeply rooted dish in um, April's family, and it, I will tell you right now, I'm obsessed with it, and it's one of my favorite things. April would, she's her wow. family was always very the generous mom. during the holidays. She would say, "Come over on Christmas Eve," you know, all the Jews. That was my mom. That was my mom. That was Georgie. That was my mom. She would say, "Come over, come over," and we would go over, and there would be, it would be like, you know, all the seven oh, fishes. Yeah. When, when I say I didn't seven, do fishes. no, but there were. But like, I cooked it all. She, my she was the most did not amazing cook. cook. She did it all. Okay, so we had like, you know, we had, even if you want to go from April making like a her amazing crab dip to going My to- My crab dip does work. It's insane. That's for another day. It's, we'll do that one next year. And then um, to, um, you know, the panko shrimp from Costco, it counts as a fish. It does. It does, but then, what was the, the star of the show, like when, you know, the opening act was like that People stuff. People just want to say, where's the bread? The Barbara Streisand of the show <laughs> was the sausage bread, the Wigsy bread, and I'm telling <laughs> I'm telling you now, guys, just wait until you see for yourself. It's easy to make. It it's is. gonna take a little bit of time, but you know what? You get a martini, you pour it ice, teeny. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. 
And uses steel glass, by the way. It keeps it cold. April taught me this tip. It's so much better no, than the glass. No, I just bought it because I knew it'd break it the other one. The glass one, this one even break. Yeah, steel is best. <laughs> I'm trying to think, maybe the wine glasses should be this way now, too, or would it, like, tin the wine? No, light? wine glasses don't make sense like this, but martini glasses definitely do. Okay. So, we're going to make the most amazing sausage bread. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make. All you need is a very few ingredients, and the, the amounts that you use is dependent upon how much bread yes. you're going to make. Mm. Uh, you know, you can make for 40, or you could, if, if two... All you need is, we'll get to it, but all you need is yeah. one dough. And, but, and it freezes incredibly yes. well. I have an uncle that legit keeps it until July because he slices it so thin mm -hmm. and that the, the, the <laughs> butter of it What's all yeah. comes to life every day. <laughs> No matter what season passes. Guys, it's, and she's right. <laughs> it, it, it's pizza dough, which you're going to get from your favorite pizza place. It is going to be... I, I don't make my own pizza dough. No. That. Just go, go to go your to, own pizza place. Go to the best pizza, pizza place, place just not Domino's. Dough. One pizza dough will make two breads. Yep. And then you're going to have some sausage, whether it it's has sweet to be premio. Or, has pre to be yeah. premio sausage. Premio, are you listening? Yeah. And if you don't want to use pork, let's say you're mm -hmm. somewhat kosher and you're okay with mixing cheese and anything but pork, you can use chicken sausage, turkey okay. sausage, whatever you want. You We're can. gonna do it for And premio that makes too. chicken sausage. You can do that. You, it can be done. You need a little cheese up in there. Right. And then you literally, it's gonna be some sausage. We're gonna, gonna throw in the oven. We're gonna let it like for about 30 minutes. We're gonna let all that sausage just come to a nice crisp. This has nothing to do with the instant pot, by the way. Nothing. No. This is all Old school in the oven all day baking sausage bread activity. It's and it's worth well worth it. And then we're gonna roll it with a bunch of cheese, provolone, mozzarella, and then we're gonna brush that delicious pizza dough with some olive oil, mm -hmm. and then sprinkle if you wish some poppy seeds or even sesame, sesame seeds. seeds. We we'll have both. Some people might have a sesame allergy, so poppy, I get it. Yeah, and if you don't want any seeds, don't put seeds. But you know, seeds are make it a little nicer. And Got pepperoni it makes it greasy. Yeah, I'm no sorry, pepperoni. I agree. Sausage bread. It's all about sausage. Otherwise, it's grease. Bread. And guys, I've had sausage before. Where I bite into a thing of bread. I'm like, mm, and it's literally like, like where's the, where's the sausage and where's the cheese? There's nothing. No, in it. you gotta guys, pack this. this big. This has it all. I mean, every every bite, there's sausage and there's cheese milk dripping from the bread to your mouth. Wait until you see. <laughs> We're gonna make this right now. Let's get going. We're gonna start right now. This with is the baking longest, the sausage. It'll be edited. Longest it's intro good. It's gonna ever. Be great. Longest intro ever. And it's perfect. So the first step, guys, is gonna be to cook our sausage, and we want to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. So you can really, like we said before, use any kind of sausage you want. It is preferred to use Italian sausage. However, if you don't want to use pork, and you can use chicken sausage or turkey sausage or whatever, tofu sausage. But we're going to use a mixture of some sweet and hot Italian sausage. I want my sausage bread to be as meaty and cheesy as possible mm -hmm. without being greasy. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest, um, if I'm looking at a Costco package of sausage, is that you use what two this... two of it and two of it so, so so two and a half pounds of sweet and two and a half pounds of hot yes. five pounds total for how many breads i don't know we're gonna find out i guess i would say about i would say about a pound of sausage per bread yes does okay. that make sense at least a pound of sausage per bread and listen not everybody likes the spicy right. so they have the sweet, mm -hmm. I think it's a sham. <laughs> um, personally, for me, I would only make the, the spicy because the premio spicy bread is the bomb dig. We love the premio. I, again, I have no partnership with premio. Premio, if you want to chat, let me know. But, but we're we a pair. Love, we, we both right, need it. Exactly. We're a pair. We, hot and, you could use hot or sweet. They have one of each. Yes, and they have chicken sausage as well. Yeah, we didn't they get do. that. Costco, get on it. Yes, exactly. Now, you can obviously tell that I did not pick out the parchment paper regimen. And frankly, you don't necessarily need parchment paper. This one's a no stick. This is a Desi, what we call in my household, a Desi D or a disaster. <laughs> this one definitely needs a parchment paper. So just for ease, everybody is going to have... We're just putting parchment paper to be safe for everything. Because parchment paper is the best. Yeah. It doesn't need to look perfect. It doesn't need to be perfectly... It's a lot of sausage. It doesn't need to be perfectly okay. spaced. At the end of the day... This you is cooking. It's a lot of sausage. At the end of the day, this is cooking about halfway through because you have to think that you really only need this to be cooked enough to be able to cut it mm -hmm. because then you're throwing it again in once it's in the bread. Exactly. So put it in the oven, 375 for about 30, 30 minutes. minutes. And flip it halfway through, right? Not you even. You don't even have to. You don't to. even have to. Look because at that. You're, you, you, 
it goes, it gets cooked again. But my only suggestion would be, I say 375, 30 minutes. My mom had an awful oven. I have a great oven. I don't know how Jeffrey's oven is because I it's haven't okay. used it. It's all right. I don't I use actually, the pot usually anymore anyway with the instant pot. I, I, I would actually set the timer for 15 minutes just to give it a, a look. And then if it doesn't look cooked enough, it just needs to be like semi-cooked through that you're able to cut it, that it's hard because you have to think it's going to cook again and you don't want it to be dry. Right. The hot is my the favorite. Boom but a lot of people don't like spicy. And honestly, the hot isn't even that spicy. It just gives it a little bit of a kick. But we're gonna put this one in the oven. Well, actually, we'll wait until we get both in there. But we're gonna now layer this one with the hot sauces and we'll put them both in the oven. Throw it in. We're gonna put all of our sausage on this tray. You guys Let's... ever go to a Yankee game? The Skip the hot dog, get the sausage sandwich. It is the bomb, the best bread. It's really, really great. And it's the same if you go to a Mac game, by the way. They have it there? Yeah, they have great sausage and peppers. She used to be like, we're, we're gonna go to the Yankee game. Oh, my dad's like, it's the Yankee game. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I used to not- My dad still game. talks about this. I knew nothing about sports. And she said, you have to wait until we get the sausage and peppers in. They're amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm excited about it. And I said to them, literally, this is true. I said during the game, how old were we? Like, I don't know, like Okay, this 15, was literally 14. like 1997. And I'm telling you. And he, my father is an avid Yankee fan. We had season tickets our whole Huge entire Yankee life. Fan. And he looks at me as he's eating his sausage sandwich. <laughs> well, if Mickey Manley is so great, why isn't he playing? <laughs> I had no idea that Mickey Manley I think was he is dead at that point. And I'm like, because he's dead, Jeffrey. <laughs> and he fought and died. I think he spit out his sausage. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the most humiliating moments of my life. And best. And best. I mean, listen, I'm a guy We're who loves Broadway. About it. I love Broadway. I didn't know anything about <laughs> baseball. I knew about damn Yankees, the musical. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we yeah. have here. So hold this up, honey. Hold up. That, there we go. We have hot and sweet sausage. We have literally 10 pounds, five pounds of each. Again, one pound per bread. We're gonna pop us in the oven for together at 30 minutes. Check it at 15. Yeah, Based check it at 15, oven. just check it out at 375 to 380, depending on your oven. And then just let it cook and then we're gonna take it out, we're gonna slice it up. So our sausage is complete in the oven. We've cooked it for about 30 to 40 minutes. It depends how much you're cooking. It depends on ovens, they all vary. Check on it. You want it to be a nice, like kind of like hard skinned type texture. I'm gonna take it out of there now, and it's gonna look perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. There we go, guys. That's how you want your sausage to look. Do you see that? Nice and round, with some juices flowing. Yes. All right, there we go. Now what we wanna do is we're gonna slice all this sausage off. You have to let it cool. We'll show you how to cut it. It does need to cool down. Um, my suggestion would be to cook sausage the night before because you could do that like over a glass of wine mm -hmm. and having people over or dinner or whatever. Right. It's done, throw it in the fridge. The next day, you start cook cooking. If your children are old enough, a list a little bit of that labor. <laughs> have them start cooking. Let them earn their keep. Exactly. Um, you know, or if somebody has demanded a sausage bread of 17, say, okay, then you need to come over and help me cut this because the most labor intensive of this job is cutting the sausage. Mm -hmm. Not only because it's just cutting and cutting is annoying, but it's greasy, so cutting greasy is difficult. Yeah. So we need to let this cool probably for about 15 at least. Mm -hmm. and it's important, you know, because when you cut sausage, you always wanna make sure it's cut properly, like any good moil would tell you. Let's cut these babies up. So I might suggest, because we're crunched on time and doing a video, <laughs> that we put them all in one bowl, or a bowl in a bowl, because yeah, it will- spicy Yeah, spicy and salt. Okay, sweet. fine, that's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're doing it in a pinch, you can throw them all in a bowl and just put them in the freezer for like 15, 20. Sure. And then you can cut them up. It'll still be warm on the inside, but it's not gonna burn your fingers. Right. Hence, you know. Exactly. So, this is greasy. Um, your hands are gonna get greasy when you cut, your knife is gonna get greasy when you're cut. Paper towels are your best friend. Paper towels. A paper towel to hold the sausage, a paper towel to <sighs> hold this. And the way you wanna cut it, at least this is what my family used to do, used to do is, um, and I used to do this in batches. So you go once, you don't have a better knife than this, do you? That's a great knife. Mm -hmm. It's a good knife. What are you talking about? Cut oh, look at that. It's perfect. Oh, perfect. She filleted the sausage. But that's not what you want to do. You fillet, <laughs> you cut in the middle. This one's perfectly cut down the center. 
So at this point, one sausage equals four sort of uh, sections. I told you it's gonna be greasy. Um, so what you do is just cut like this pieces. Yeah, it's a little bit of a process. It's you should do it with Now people. imagine, yes. So in other words, enlist the labor. Mm -hmm. um, and just keep, you have to do this for right. all of them. It's way easier to do it when mm -hmm. it's colder. That being said, it's also greasier to do it when it's colder. This is literally the hardest part of the recipe. Is just it is. Th this, this is the hardest part of the recipe. And this is where you have a party. You mm -hmm. know, you want good bread, you better get over and help us out. <laughs> okay, guys. So we've diced up all of our sausage. In this bowl, we have all of our sweet sausage diced up. And in this bowl, we have all of our hot sausage diced up. We keep them separate so you can choose which one you want to use, whether it be one or the other or mix. And then we have a nice big bowl of some shredded mozzarella. Again, it's all by eye, really. And I hate to say that, but this is kind of old school. And then we have sliced provolone cheese. And then we have some Parmesan grated, some black pepper, and then we have some olive oil with a brush. And of course, the most important thing to do here with the sausage bread is to have the bread, which is pizza dough, which I simply got from a pizza joint that's in Easiest here. way to do it. If you really want to be that fancy, and sure, make your go own. ahead and make your dough, but we're not going to tell you how no. to do it here. Exactly. The one thing I would caution is that Everything here, the sausage, the cheese, it has a lot of salt in it already. Mm -hmm. Don't add extra salt. There's no need for it. Right. Um, when you get your pizza dough, you can get it in the morning and not use it until 3.55 in the afternoon. Um, take it out of the box or whatever it is. They give it to you in, put it on a floured sort of surface, put a little flour on top, and then um, cover it because it helps it just stay fresh. Each bread that we typically make, Great each pizza dough. dough makes two breads. So here's a dough that's been sitting for a while. Just cut it in half with a good knife. So one bread, another bread right there. All right, now some of you are gonna opt to do this with uh, a rolling pin. I don't think it's necessary. I have always used my hands. So I'm just gonna walk you through that. I'm not um, watching her do this. She's really fascinating. So you start like that. And you want it to be almost like a, a rectangle in shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, it really doesn't. But you do need to work it a bit with your hands. Wow, look at how she pounds that dough. The ends tend to chunk up a bit, so that's kind of where you need to like just work it. Um, you get a little bit of exercise if you haven't. <laughs> Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. If there's a little hole, if there's like a little butt sticking out like that one there, it's okay. Um, play with it. The dough doesn't need to be perfect. You want to stretch it a little bit. Again, you guys are not pizza dough or pizza makers. It's all good. Yeah, again, wherever you live, there's a pizza joint probably somewhere around there. Just ask them if you could buy some dough from them. They're usually more than happy to sell it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it kind of looks rectangular, mm -hmm. right? It looks great. Um, it's okay, you see a little bit of thinness there, all good, because at this point, now you're gonna start the rolling process and the prep process. So it's not that big of a deal um, if there is a little bit of holes places. So this is basically gonna be like a jelly roll, but instead of jelly, it's like cheese and sausage. Exactly. So the first part, now that we have our semi-okay rectangle, is olive oil. Um, you can do it with your hands, which I assume most people like to do, but it's easier to just give it a light brush um, with, a brush. Silicone, whatever kind of brush you got. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's nice that, by the way, April, that you don't need to use a rolling pin if you don't have You know, you don't pin. have to. I mean, listen, some people do. I've, I've tried to do it with a rolling pin also, but like, I don't know. I just find it fine to do with your hands. She's old school. It's, it's, it's like not needed. This is the old school way, and I love, this is and why I love this so much. You know, like, if I'm using a rolling pin at the end of the day, I mean, how often are you using that? Let's be real, it got lost in the basement somewhere. <laughs> All right, so you put a nice coating of olive oil on mm -hmm. it. All mm -hmm. around, like legit, make Gorgeous. sure it it's touches cool. everything. It's glistening. Good. Um, pepper, first step. Uh, yeah, yeah, the other All around, give it a good little bit of pepper. 
Peppa Zappa, as my dad would say. So pepper first, black pepper, Parmesan cheese. Any type will work. I'm not gonna comment on the type that we currently have here. It was on sale. Mm, not Listen, the type. I'm not snobby with that stuff. You actually don't need to be snobby with your ingredients. The only thing I would be snobby with your ingredients with is the the sausage quality that you use. Premium. You know, great. some people would be like, oh, I go to the butcher. <laughs> Please, <laughs> stop. Just use the premium. My cousin Darren did that. It sucked. Okay, <laughs> so then, parm. You do your little pepper deppa, you do a little bit of parm. Mm. Or, in this case, a little bit more. I mean, you want a good coating, right? Like, you want to just make sure that it hits every place. It doesn't have to be drenched, mm -hmm. but good. Done. So Gorgeous. we did our pepper. We did our part. Next. This is a step that you cannot step, like stop. You can't skip. Skip, excuse me. Um, it has to be provolone. Like don't try to give me your Asiago BS. I mean, sure, if you want to put Asiago, great. It's provolone all the way. The shopper the better. This is from Costco. Of course we love Costco and it was like for 44 slices, like seven bucks. It's a crazy great price. And there's no grating involved here, guys. We're not grating anything. We're not like ripping our knuckles. I used to. She used to do this. Used to. I actually still do do it sometimes, but I actually, they used to not, when we were much younger, sell um, provolone by the slice unless you went to the deli. And you know, the fifth year that yeah, I yeah. ripped the skin off of my <laughs> nails, I was like, dad, we need to buy some slices. He's like, no, I go, yes. And then ever since we went slice. Slices is just it's just easier. Like why it, not? It is. <laughs> and it's like done. And you're gonna roll and simple. I remember when April used to grate the problem. Oh my god, it's the worst. That's the worst. Talk step. about prep. That yeah. was like a three day prep. Alright, so at this point you've flattened out your dough, you've made it into like a semi perfect rectangle, you've laid your hot pe um, your black pepper, you've laid your parmesan cheese, and now you've laid a roll um, a nice coating of the probe, which is not to ever, ever, ever be skipped, and now you just roll. It literally is as easy as that. Um, we'll make a hot sausage first. We'll do hot sausage. It's because it's my preference. So now I, I'm not skimpy. Um, I put a very, especially in the middle, big fat chunk of sausage you want to make the roll thin but still be very plentiful but the middle is the most important and she's saying the middle because when you start is obviously the middle of the roll because once it gets rolled up this is what's going to be in the middle of the piece yes and in the middle only you do the sausage and the mozzarella at the same time so basically it's like the butter juice of italian <laughs> and you take it and you roll it Oof. just once this girl knows what she's doing okay the one thing I will say is make sure that the roll is tight. It's okay to stretch the bread. Nothing is going to happen. The other thing that my father used to be like super annoying about is the ends. There's not enough sausage in the ends. So make sure that your ends are still getting that sausage because what you don't want is to roll a whole sausage bread and have like some sham that doesn't have like <laughs> meat and cheese at the end. So take it roll it, the middle roll gets the meat and cheese simultaneously. It's okay if things, you know, come out the side, either Jeffrey will eat it or you use it for exactly. another. I just, huh? Now, I'm a human garbage it goes disposal. meat, half roll, cheese, half roll. So we're gonna So do let's meat. call this a notch, like this is one notch. Notch, now we're gonna do half notches. So meat, half notch, so we do that, and this doesn't need to be as meaty as the middle was. The middle needs to be the meatiest portion of the entire roll. So, that. exactly. So you see this half notch, it has a very nice distributed um, layer of sausage across the whole entire thing. You do a half roll, and then what you wanna do, half roll, it will fall, it's fine, um, is do mozzarella, because that's almost like your glue. Mm -hmm. That's your sealant. Mm -hmm. and, and that should be distributed well as well. Also, another half roll. Meat. So it's literally just a repeat now. It's Everything. Like, it's the, so the first, the first, as April said, the first. But make it tight. Don't be loose about it. Yeah, be nice and tight about it. The first thing you gotta do is you have to obviously for the middle, because it's the beginning of the, of the roll, but is add the generous amount of sausage with a generous amount of mozzarella. Then once you roll that notch over, then you literally alternate between thin layers. Half. 
exactly. of sausage, then mozzarella, then but, sausage, then mozzarella. But again, so say here, it goes all the way to the end. It's a tighter roll. It's okay to take the roll and make it tighter. What, you need the seal, the glue in mm -hmm. between. That was probably a little bit too much mozzarella. Um, is there such a thing? I mean, It is. Mozzarella gets greasy and you already have so much cheese on it. A half roll. This looks insane already. I it mean, is. I'm like, I could eat this raw, I feel like. Again, another sort of roll. Light, not as big as the middle. All the way to the end or Ronald will yell at you. <laughs> Ronald's my dad. <laughs> half. The seal, the glue. Like I said, it's not a science, so it's really hard to give you guys like exact. Yeah, you just have to do it uh, by eye. This is an old school, amazing family recipe that we're sharing with you. April's generous enough to let us in on this. Again, sausage all the way to the end. Sometimes towards the end, it starts to like combine together. It's not a science. Just always make sure you get to the end roll. And then once you get about here, it's kind of like, okay, what do I do next? So my suggestion always is, if you have a little bit left, just do a little bit of each, because this is gonna show, right? Do a little, little bit of each. Um, and you don't roll it again, but you take this with the dough, like that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh my God, that looks amazing. Right? <laughs> oh wow, that looks unreal. <laughs> That's okay. not even baked yet. No. Um, so there's, uh, two really minor last steps. Uh, I need a uh, thing to put it on. Okay. Do we need to grease it? I mean, listen, go back to the parchment paper. Should I would I, use the non-stick one for now. Um, either... You want... So the non-stick one, by the way, we still have some grease left. You can leave the grease because you wanted to leave it. I leave the grease. But if it doesn't have non-stick, you absolutely have to use, have to use parchment paper. Um, so you put one in. Um, what I typically do is give it a last sort of glaze of the olive oil because that gives it a nice sort of glaze. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was really big on poppy seeds, so in honor of this, just put a little poppies on top. Mm, that's a nice touch. And that's that. And you can use sesame seeds. And typically, like. what I do is do two per um, sheet, depending on how big your sheet is. So we'll do one more really quick. Mm -hmm. Put it in the oven, and and then be how, good. Long put it, how long we put it in there for? So three seventy five. Again, not an exact science because it's going to depend on how fat you make it and all of that. So I would say three seventy five. Check on it after thirty minutes. We're going to have to check it along the way. Okay. So we're going to have to check Every it oven varies. Like that. Every oven varies. It's a minimum of 30 minutes unless you have like some hyper oven. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say 30 minutes, check it, and then go from there. So I'll make one more. We'll put it in and we'll go from there. Okay. And the oven just sounded and time has passed and the sausage breads are ready. So let's get them out of the oven, huh? And here are these beauties. Do you see that? Look at how, oh, this is hot. Look <laughs> at how gorgeous they are. Golden brown and a delicious crisp. Before you take them out of the oven, make sure they have this golden crisp and make sure the bottom is cooked through. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, they have to go back in more. It and might like, look like they're burned on top, but I promise you they're not. Even if we had cooked this for another 15 minutes, it would have been okay. And, you know, like I said, all ovens vary. It started at least at 30 minutes. You can go from 375 to 400. Like I said, all ovens vary. You might even go up to as long as 45 minutes. We did two at a time here. Uh, again, the choice is yours. And if you do just two of them, that's one pizza dough, guys, and you get... Hang on. I mean, it literally is enough yeah. for like... And you get all of this. This is going to feed easily like 10 people, at least. So one pizza dough is going to feed 10 people. Of a, it, picture it as the most amazing stromboli you've ever had. Even better. <laughs> now let's cut into this. I'll start from the middle. That's how we usually do it. Now oh. look. Oh. Do you see how every layer has cheese? Every layer has oh meat. Like it's not a sham. Like the old wigs used to do. That you know you had like a piece of meat every once in a blue. This is a fully loaded cheese meat bomb. It's got it all, baby. Look at that. Cut that up into a nice piece. Oh, look at that. Just look at it. It's making me my mouth I mean, water. It really is delicious. All that cheese in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's get a pic. So I'm gonna ridiculous. take a picture of it. Hang on. 
All right, so let's do the honors here and let's cut this up and share it, okay? Ooh, so this is hot and it's steaming. Look at this. I know. Like this is cool for like at least 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm, it's a spicy one. Uh huh. Mm. This is gonna be. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. This is going to be the first thing to go in any any party easily. In fact, when people go to your party, they'll show up just because they know you're making this. Mm. Oh my mm. God. Mm. Homemade sausage bread, huge success. A true, true April's family uh, a legacy right here. And guys, no home is complete, honestly, without it. No matter what religion you are, food knows no religion. It's delicious, it's perfect for the holidays, and it's going to be perfect for an appetizer to lay out when people come. Well, you know what? Screw it. Take the entire thing and just have yourself a nice, giant <laughs> bite. I'm not gonna do it, but I, <laughs> you know I would do it if the cameras are off. I legit mm. have a tingle throughout my body. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, It's bees. so good. Yes. <laughs> Call me if it ain't good because you're doing something wrong. Yes. If, it, if you're doing. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions, it, but no, it's not. It's not an art. Yeah. You, you know what, you guys? This recipe is literally what you make of it. Um, it's going to basically be. There's no exact measurements here. It's just. I bought a lot of things. Yes. It's amazing. Oh. It's amazing. April's gonna definitely take this home with her to her father. Yeah. I know for a fact. Um, it's remarkable. So from us to you, happy holidays. Happy um, holidays. And really more than happy Hanukkah. Else, all that stuff. Whatever you celebrate. Kwanzaa. Yeah. Anything. If you don't celebrate nothing. any holidays, who cares? Just happy enjoy love. the food. But I'll tell you something else right now. There's nothing. Holidays can be holidays. You can celebrate whatever. The most important part about it all, at the core of it, is that you celebrate it with amazing food. And family. I love you. I love you too. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Thanks for the first video initiation. Yeah, <laughs> but there'll be more to come. In the meantime, give me more. I got a few other recipes. Give me more of this. Jeffrey. <laughs>